Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning study. And um, we're going to uh, continue looking at uh, uh, what we've been doing, putting these things online. We're going to go back a little bit um, and review some things uh, as we move forward. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this day and for the time that we have to study together. We invite your spirit's presence into our hearts and our homes, into our lives. And um, we pray, Lord, that we can be obedient to your voice and that we can walk in the light that you've given us. We pray for those who are studying these things, that you can continue uh, to teach them. And um, we ask that uh, the mistakes that we have made can be corrected and that we can consider things that we have never seen before in your word. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, good morning again. Welcome to the study. And uh, so I just want to go back a little bit. You, you can see in this chart, we we looked at it a bit yesterday and we added something to it. And, and what we added is we were looking at uh, Daniel 11 verse seven and Daniel 11 verse 10. And in Daniel 11 verse seven, it's going to talk about, um, get there. <clears throat> um, they shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north, right? And, and we get that in verse 10, where it talks about um, they shall, he shall be stirred up. He shall return him he sh and be stirred up even to his fortress. So we looked at this word fortress. Now, this word fortress uh, occurs in Ezekiel chapter uh, 25, I believe. It was 25, 21. No, it's 24, 21, right? Uh, speak unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, which your soul pitieth, that your soul, that which your soul pitieth, and your sons and your daughters whom ye have left shall fall by the sword. Now, actually, the connection was with verse 25. Also thou, son of man, shall it, not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters. That word strength there is the same as the word fortress. It's uh, the Hebrew word 4581. Now, in uh, verse 21, we have this, another word strength, and it talks about the excellency of your strength. So it's talking about the same thing. Take away from their, them their strength, and it's referred to as the excellency of your strength. Uh, the word excellency, here, I'll just switch the screen here just so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, in verse 21, excellency of your strength is an expression that's only found one other place in the Bible, and that's in Leviticus 26, um, verse 19, I believe, uh, where it talks about the pride of your power. I should break the pride of your power. And so excellency is translated there as pride and strength there is translated as power. Now it was noted by Angela that this number, the Hebrew number 1347, is a number that was presented by Colin, um, which would be like what, 12 days ago um, in a study he did on Sabbath. Um, where he looks at the 1,533 days from November 9th, 2016, which is when Trump becomes president and um, goes to uh, July 18, 2020. And then there's another 186 days to January 21st, 2021, 20, uh, when Biden becomes president. So, so we put that in there yesterday. We put it on the chart. So you can see it here. There you've got the word pride, 1347. 
and this 1,533 days to January 20th, 2021, and the 186 days here. Now, what I noticed is that we have from the start of this uh, Soviet-Afghan war on 12-24-79 to November 9th, 2016, 10 times 1347, which is 13,470 days. So I added that there. Um, now it's, so it's not listed here because we don't have, let me see here. Yeah, so we don't have the November 16th date in this chart that you see below, but I do have it on um, my uh, program here. So you can just see it if you want to see it. I can quickly go there. So just this is a more complete chart with more dates. And you can see here you have the 13,470 days from December 24th, 1979 to November 9th, 2016. And then uh, from that date um, to uh, January 20th, 2021, you'll see 1533 days. Uh, here on this chart, I don't have the July 18, 2020 date, but it will be um, uh, 1,000 or 1,347 days from that date, November 6, 2016, to July 18, 2020. Another way you could look at it is if you look at this 1095 and you add 252, you're going to get 1347. So just um, what would be the significance? How does that help us with what we've done with these lines? So now that we have that symbol there, is 1347, and we connect it back to the start of the Afghan war. What does that tell us about this line that we did with Biden, showing that Biden is the one that comes into his estate on January 20th, 2021? Is this structure valid? Can we take this 13,470 days, a date which we already had, and take this 1,347 days from Colin's study, which is this word pride that we've connected here? Is this a valid line? Is this a valid structure? It has to be. And when I'm thinking of pride, I'm thinking of verses in Proverbs about a high wall and his own conceit. You know, they talk about man's perception of himself and how much vaunting of self do we see in the globalists? Like it absolutely repels me. It's all, it's Luciferian, but it's also self exaltation. New humans, you know, android humans. It's just sickening. And this is, is the spirit of of the globalist wokeism and this AI crap? Pardon my language, but it's just okay. Well, okay. Well, to me, I don't know what you're talking about. But um, so this word that's translated pride in Leviticus 26 verse 19, it's it's translated as excellency, majesty, pomp, arrogancy, swelling, right? Um, Gaon, right, is the word, and um, so it's, um, you know, definitely has a negative connotation to it. Um, uh, and I said that we have it in only one other place. It is in Ezekiel 30, verse 6 as well, um, uh, where we have pride of, of her power or pride of, you know, I should break the pride of thy power. It's you have it in Ezekiel 30, verse 6. You have pride of of her power, referring to Egypt. Um, so what would be the significance there if we're going to take, thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From the tower of Syene shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. So what would be the significance that those two 
uh, other two places besides Leviticus 26 have that expression. I forgot about this other one. Because it's applied here to Egypt in Ezekiel 30. This is a lament for Egypt. Do we have Egypt in this story in Daniel chapter 11? I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, because that's the king of the south. Now, the daughter of the king of the south. So if we go, so let's go back to these verses. Because um, what we were sorting out, and, and I don't know how much Stephen has seen of this. Um, so we had we had done uh, verses three to six. Uh, we could clearly show that. um him coming into his estate in verse 7, that 3653, three, that's a period of 10 years, and that would connect um, the 10 years from January 20th, 2011 to January 20th, 2021. And um, so the January uh, 20th, 2011 is connected to the end of the Afghan-Soviet war by 8,900 days, which is the expression four winds adds up to 8,009. So, so we, we have that, and then we just simply count uh, these 3,653 days, and that brings us to uh, January 20th, 2021. So that... Um, so that, that's the word estate which is on our chart again so that's going to connect to january 20th so we have the 1533 days to january 20th and we have this word estate to january 20th the thing that's sort of remarkable is how um these numbers the 1347 um and the 1533 and these different dates from Collins study are coming into play here. So we're saying that on January 20th, that when it says here, um, but a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north. We're saying that this is what happens in connection with Biden coming into office. So, so we're directly relating this by looking at this past history, but with these numbers, this symbolism of these numbers, relating it to our time. Now, one thing we didn't do with the line specifically was mark, you know, the arrival of the first message. And, and, and we're going to do that because we're going to start putting these lines together, together later. For now, we are just laying out uh, the chronology of these lines. Um, so then we started looking at verses 7 and 8, right? So that's obviously out of the branch of her roots. Shall one stand up in his estate? Um, so connecting that to Biden. And then um, in verse 8, just saying that they shall all carry, also carry captives into Egypt, their gods with their princes. So this is uh, the economic control that he shall continue more years than the king of the north. We know that's going to be true of the Ptolemic Empire. Um, uh, but we attach that here uh, to um, this, this power that's, that is the globalist. So this is Egypt, right? This is the daughter of the king of the south. So it's connected with the philosophy or the religion of Egypt. Now, um, So when we go back over this, and we just we're going to say what this is talking about. So we're just going to review this really quickly. So a mighty king shall stand up and shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And we're going to get Stephen to make some comments and we'll get to the because uh, uh, he before the study he started talking about what Chowtu and Kimberly were teaching regarding Daniel chapter eleven. But I know there were different views uh, being promoted about Daniel 11, but we're going to do the best we can to look at um, these other ideas that were happening at the time when we first started studying this. 
So mighty king shall stand up. So we know historically this is Alexander, but we're making an application to our time. So that's going to be the period of time from December 24th, 1979 to February 15th, 1989. Right. Uh, he shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. So uh, the breaking of his kingdom, when is the kingdom broken? The USSR. Twenty fifth of December, nineteen ninety one. Okay, yeah. So it's going to be in that history in nineteen eighty nine, right? So it's from November 9th, nineteen eighty nine, to December twenty fifth, nineteen ninety one. Right. So that's a period of 777 inclusive days. So it's it's a symbol that we already have attached to our history to November 9th, 2019, all the way to December 25th, 2020. OK, so, so yeah. if you're applying if you're applying this here to Mighty King being Alexander the Great to the USSR, mm -hmm. the USSR stands up in a sense. 1917, would it not? Yes, but we're looking at it in connection with our history with the time of the end, right? So we're not going back to 1917. We're going to that period in which the time of the end is going to happen. So we have this nine years and so many months. Um, so it's like two months from the beginning of the Afghan war to the end of the Afghan war, which is going to lead to what happens with the fall of the Soviet Union. So we know in the 1980s, because there's this proxy war going on in the U.S., that's why we're looking at that history and not going all the way back, right? So we're looking at the time when they're having, during the time of the Cold War, they're having a proxy war in Afghanistan. Now, so so we made that, we'll call it a guess, um, and then we started looking at the symbols. So before we had uh, these Hebrew numbers, we, we just put the dates there, right? So we put uh, this war from of 341 days from December 24th, 79 to February 15th, 89. And we just put it there, right? And then we started looking at the numbers. So we knew we had other dates. We had November 9th, 1989. We had September 11th, 2001, and um, obviously we had these, um, uh, like November 9th, 2019, right, the 30 years. But as we started to look at these numbers, we started to realize that they fit into uh, what Colin had presented. So Colin had presented some things dealing with the January 20th date and the July 18th date. So as we started to look at these, these spans of time that were given by these Hebrew numbers, such as, uh, you know, the one where we take the four winds of heaven, which is 16,073 days, and that it brings us to December 25th, 2023, from the start of that Afghan war, that would tie that in. Plus, we also have the December 25th, 2023 date from the 8,141 8, days. Both of these are inclusive counts that end on December 25th, 2023. So we, we just couldn't ignore that we have these two witnesses from these numbers. Um, um, and then we had, uh, you know, that word stand up, which shows up a few times in these verses, but it can go from September uh, 11th, 2001, to the first day, uh, 20th day of the first month in 2018. And that's going to be seven years after January 20th, 2011. And then we have another uh, number, which is going to bring us to uh, January 20th, 2021. We also can look at January 20th, 2025, which we put on this line, which is going to be 391 
and a half days or 391 exclusive days, however you want to count it, from December 25th, 2023 to January 20th, 2025, which is going to be this seventh king, right? The one that follows Biden. And he's going to be the Civil War king. So, so in putting this all together, we can say we're starting with this Afghan-Soviet war because it fits in with this line. But we put it there first and then found the, the structure. So now we also have from the beginning of that war to the date that uh, Trump is elected, 13,470 days, 10 times the number of days from that date to July 18. So, so we have all of these witnesses that this is where this structure is. So does that help, Stephen? Yes, I'm just wanting to know what uh, inspired your guess, sort of put the mighty king standing up in 1979. I don't know. It was just a guess. So when we did it, we just said, we know that we've talked about that war, and we were just looking at this progression of the Soviet Union that it's going to fall, and we know that that war has been marked by Jeff before. And so we just put the dates there. So when we started with this line, that's that's all we had. We did have the February 15th, 1989 date that was intriguing because it's 191 years from February 15th, 1798. And if you remember, Dwight had dealt with that 191 years um, or the 191 BC, um, which is the center of the 434 years, right? <clears throat> yes. Right. So, so we already had that. Yeah, another interesting thing, which uh, I was going to get to, but I'm just going to mention it in this context here, is um, when we look at, I, I, I did something kind of odd. I, I took this verse, 11.9, and I added up all of the Hebrew numbers for the definitions in this verse. Right. So I. Um, so what I did is I I added, and I'm just going to do it again here quickly. So I added um, four four two eight plus five four uh, four five plus nine three five plus four four three eight plus seven seven two five plus four one three plus one two seven and the number I get is twenty three thousand so what is this here they do that right because I think I got a different number I'm just gonna check this out again so I got four four two eight you guys can look at what I'm doing, make sure I do this correctly. Because I did it a couple times already. So 4428 plus 5045. I think I made a mistake there before. Plus 935 plus 4438 plus 77. Two five plus four one three plus yeah I've made a mistake there one twenty seven so so this number twenty three thousand one hundred eleven what is the properties of this number So if we, here, I'll do it this way. Um, yeah, so it's 11 times 11 times 191. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, so 23111, just to show people here. It's, so, so we see that 191 in there, right? 
and 11 times 11. So 11 times 11, 121. Um, and that, that number has shown up before, right? So we've had, plus we know that Daniel 11, 11 is going to be this battle of Raphia. So, um, so I think it's significant that if we add that verse up, that is 11, 9, we're going to get 11 times 11 times 191. So it's just, it, it's not a major argument, um, but it is something that is rather interesting. Now, you know, we still have tried to justify how we're using these Hebrew numbers. At least I I have always been. That it, it just seems kind of odd, you know, from the average person's perspective that you're going to use Strong's numbers to do this. But I don't think that this can be some kind of coincidence. I've thought about it a lot. Um, you know, here we just have too many things to be a coincidence with these numbers. And I think this is just a witness to that. So adding up these, these Hebrew words in this verse, I think, is um, important as, as a witness to that. Okay, so... Um, so the idea then is that we have, have said that we're paralleling the time of the end, that is the fall of the papacy, the fall of, of Alexander's kingdom, the fall of the Soviet Union as parallel with each other. Now they're different, they're different powers, right? Though we could we could argue that Soviet Union being globalists is connected more with Alexander's king. But if we know, we know that 1989 is already paired with 1798, so we've already done that pairing. It's just basically taking Alexander's kingdom and applying this story like we would in the book of Judges, applying this story to our history. And if we're going to apply to our, our history, we're going to say when he shall stand up, that must be in connection with our time at the end, not going back to 1917. So it's going to be when he stands up and his kingdom is divided towards the four winds of heaven. It doesn't happen in 1917, but it does happen here at the end. Was there another question there or another thing that I needed to clarify that I forgot about? Okay, so so if we're saying that this is the fall of the Soviet Union and its division, then um, we know that the king of the South, it says, shall be strong. So the king of the South must represent the UN because that's where the power, the symbolism is going to move. So when it says... And one of his princes, how did we resolve that? One of his princes shall be strong above him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. <clears throat> Are we just taking that as... Because we're saying the king of the south is this principle. Now, one of his princes, we can see, well, one of, one is an added word. So how did we resolve that yesterday? How did we look at one of his princes? So princes is, so how are we going to resolve that? How are we going to take this? Are we going to take this as, as who? Okay. 
So how do we resolve that? So if you say it's not necessarily one of his princes, what is it? So who is, how do we resolve one of his princes? You, you should remember that. He shall be strong above him and have dominion. So this, Dwight this was, was directed us to this. Yeah. So Nigel has three as a solicit. Right. So this northern kingdom, right? He would eventually become the king of the north, yes. Right. So what we're doing is we're referring this back to to the king of the north, not to the king of the south. Right? Because the king of the south shall be strong. And of his princes, he shall be strong above him. So so this is the king of the north is stronger than the king of the south and have dominion, right? That's how we understand this historically. And so here, the the one of his princes is uh, Seleucid, correct? That's historically. And so this can't be um, the king of the south shall be strong. It's not one of his princes that is strong. So, so how do we apply this then, if we're going to apply it to our time? We're saying this is the time in the time of the end in our history. Well, Solicit would have the largest territory eventually of the four okay. Greek empires. Or you, did you apply it to maybe Russia having the largest territory? Well, no, we're, we're going to apply this, the king of the north, to the United States. So the king of the south is this. So to so the United States, so it's of his princes, um, the king of the south shall, shall be strong. And of his princes, he shall be a strong above him and have dominion and dominion shall be great. So this is just saying that the king of the north is stronger than the king of the south. Right, which is the case historically. But in our history, we would have to apply this to 1989. So now at the end of years, we're going to place this as September 11th. This is where this league occurs. So at the end of years, they shall join themselves together. The king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. And we took ends of years, we added it together, we get this period of time. Um, uh, how did we do that? I don't know if we added them together. What did we do? We just took uh, the years. I'm trying to remember now what we did with this year. So the years was the seven, uh, seven, zero, um, nine, three. And the 7093 was, where did we have that? At the end of year. So the 8141 is the number of days from September 11th to December 25th, 2023. So in verse 5, you have the king of the south. Yeah. So you have solicit coming out of basically out of that dominion and forming his own territory. So is that not like saying if you're going to, with your application, the like United States comes out of Russia and forms a greater territory than Russia? No, when it says of his princes, the his is a reference to Alexander, not to the king of the south. How do you, well, just the context, is that not first five talking about, you no, know, Alexander's first three? So you have, yeah. is that no. not sort of de yeah. de detached okay. from that? Okay. You're not so, beyond that history? Okay. So normally in English, we would do it that way, right? We're going to say, 
the he is going to be referring to some the he just before, right? But we know in Hebrew that's not the case. So when we talk about one of his princes, the his must be Alexander, historically. That's one of his generals, right? Seleucid is one of his generals. So that's how we have applied it. Well, that goes against what Uriah Smith was saying. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. We said yesterday. But but Dwight showed how it, it actually is referring to, uh, the his is referring to uh, um, the mighty king that stands up in verse 3. Correct, Dwight, if you're there? Is that how you understood it? That's what I said, yes. Yeah. That's what I was led to say. Yeah. Because we we have to look at this. We have to take the construction of the language and apply it because we're dealing with the the progression from I believe it's uh, Daniel eleven three into this verse. Mm -hmm. We weren't dealing with the king of the south. We were dealing with the the mighty one and his kingdom being broken. And so, so grammatically, in the way that Hebrew is written and the context, it goes all the way back to the a mighty king that stands up, right? All of his princes that shall be strong above the king of the south. See, the context of above him, would that not be above then Alexander the Great? If you're, because that context, one of his princes and above yeah. him. So that, okay. to me, if you're, if you're going to apply that to uh, uh, okay. Alexander just, the Great, then not him, should apply to Alexander the Great. Yes, except that that's not how Hebrew works. So in English, we have really strict rules about who the he's and the hymns are referring to, right? That it's it's the person before. But in Hebrew, it could be referring to any of the 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 persons before that are masculine. So it, it's not like there's a rule that you have to go back to Alexander. You have to look at the whole context. So so the him, he shall be strong above him. So one of his princes, the his, is Alexander. The he is Seleucid. And the him is the king of the south, Ptolemy. Right? So in Hebrew, that's totally allowed. And, and I could show you hundreds of examples of this in scripture. Has other scholars made this here application? And this here, if you understand Hebrew. Yeah, is so when I is this, verse, is this, this is not like a new thing, what you're yes. suggesting. Other, others have said this. This is what I did when I took Hebrew. It was one of the things we had to learn. So we had to learn that you could, if you're reading a sentence in Hebrew, the he can refer to something a few verses back, or it could refer to something in that verse. Because of how they, all they're doing is they're mask, they're making the, um, the verb masculine, right? So they have different grammatical rules than we have in English. So when we translate it into English, it seems odd. But yeah, there's hundreds of examples throughout scripture uh, where you'll see this happen. So, so the whole context wouldn't make sense if one of his princes is going to be strong above Alexander, right? So, so the him is going to refer to the king of the south. The he uh, to Seleucid, right? And his princes refers back to the princes that the kingdom is divided, right? Not to any of his posterity, but to his generals. So it's according to his dominion. That is according to his kingdom, which was divided. Okay, you have other you have other examples, but I what see. I was specifically asking 
was more has other commentators in this year's specific example. Say, for instance, maybe uh, Adam Clark or oh, okay. Lawrence or whatever. Have they said this year him is one of his? Sorry, his princes is applying to Alexander the Great. Um, well, I don't know if they have. I mean, we could look it up. Um, I'm sure there would be other commentators that would agree, but um, so his prince, so let me just look up here quickly, some of these other commentaries. Um, all he says here is one of his princes, this was Seleucus Nicator, who possessed Syria, Babylon, and Media, uh, king of the south is Ptolemy. It doesn't say anything about his shall be strong above him or his. It doesn't, his princes, it doesn't mention that there. Um, so he says the king of the south here is the king of Egypt. Uh, Yeah, so here um, Albert Barnes says the same thing I say. The meaning of this passage is there would be one of his princes, that is the princes of Alexander, who would be more mighty than the one who obtained Egypt. Is that good enough there? Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, not that commentators are always right, but at least, you know, we're not saying something that somebody else hasn't said. Though sometimes we do say things nobody else has ever said. But in this case, as long as that satisfies you. Yeah. So because when I would read this before, I would always think one of his princes, that would be one of the, the, the kings of the South's princes. Right. But and, and I think that's basically what Uriah Smith says, but it, it's not what it would would mean. OK, so if we're taking this in making this application. So the Soviet Union has been divided, right? But now we're going to say one of his princes. Well, we're not going to be arguing that this is Alexander's generals, right? So, so that would be uh, where we would try to say, how do we understand this? How do we understand Alexander's kingdom is divided? And of his princes, he shall be strong above him. So the he that shall be strong in our history has to be the king of the north. But the king of the north does not come from the Soviet Union. That would be your objection, right? Well, yes, you're applying as if the United States would be one of the Russia's princes. Yeah, but what we're saying is that the king of the south is no longer Russia, or or the kingdom is no longer Russia, right? That is, we're going to see this kingdom fall, and now the king of the south is the United Nations. Are the United States part of the United Nations? Yes. Okay. So that's where we would make the application. The United States is included in this. Now, the Soviet Union was, in a sense, it's the globalists, right? It's Greece, it's, it's Egypt, you know, it's all these types of things that's global. Um, but there is this division then of this kingdom. But then, are you not saying? Are you not saying now that USA now has a bigger dominion than the United Nations? Um, yes, in the sense of it's it's the controlling power of the United Nations. The UN, I mean, the UN existed before them, but this aspect of the King of the South moves to the UN. The United States is the King of the North. It's the controlling power of the UN. Right? When the Soviet Union falls, does the United States gain more power? Now, there's also the king of the south gains power as well. That is the aspect of globalism, which has moved from the Soviet Union, now moves to the UN. So the UN has existed before. 
but it wasn't really the king of the South. So in 1989 or in 2001, we're going to see that um, that it's go the UN is going to be strength. That is the king of the South aspect of the UN is going to be strengthened. Any thoughts on that? No, I do okay. understand the United States will have that will be the primary primary king in a sense yeah. of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. um, and they're they're going to be characterized by the king of the north because the United States is the the army for the papacy, which is the king of the north later on. But here in this context, putting it into our history, the United States in 1989, it's responsible for the fall of the Soviet Union, along with the papacy. Now, now, what we haven't really established, we talk about the king's daughter of the South. Well, the king's daughter of the South, I mean, this is a symbol of a church, but we haven't, we haven't said that it's anything more than a philosophy that has infiltrated Christianity. I, I don't think we're trying to say that this is specifically the papacy or anything like that. But what we have here in Daniel 11, 6, Oh, and I just wanted to get back to uh, to you, Stephen, with uh, where it talks about the end of years. So this word end, 7093, if we count from uh, 911, it goes to your birthday in 2021. And the significance of your birthday in 2021 is your 52nd birthday, right? Yes. Is it? Um, yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the 52nd birthday is a symbol of 18720, because 52 times 360 is 18720, right? Um, yeah. So that, that was kind of interesting. But also, we know that uh, your birthday in 1969, on February 11th, 1969, is 11,900 days to 9-11. Right mm -hmm. now, there's now there's also a characteristic with your birthday that is if you add eleven thousand uh, nine hundred to your birthday, uh, we get. And I'm just going to make sure I do this right. Um, yeah, it's two thousand one, September eleven. Yeah. So if we add um, we get November 9th, right? So if we add uh, from your birthday, I'm just trying to find it here. Um, so if we just take your birthday, it could be any time, but we just count 1,190 days instead of 11,900. Then, or is it going back? I think actually if you go from November 9th, that must be what it is. November 9th, and you count, 11, that's it, 1,190 days. You get February 11th, right, depending on which year you put it in. So, for instance, if we go to, um, uh, I think we have to go like 1989. I'm just going to go to 1989. I think that's where I originally did it. So you have this characteristic of this 11-9, yeah. So if you go from November 9th, 1989, and you count 1,190 days, you get your birthday in 1993, right? So mm -hmm. depending on where the leap years are, sometimes it'll go to February 12th. But um, you have this characteristic with your birthday. From the day you're born, it's 11,900 days to 9-11. And if you count from November 9th, 1989, it also goes to your birthday if we use 1,190 days. So it's, it's kind of like a mirror 
So it, it ties together 9-11 and 11-9 with your birthday. And so when it says here, and the end of years, so that word end is 7093, um, that's going to be connected to uh, to your birthday, right? So that's going to be connected to your 21st birthday by counting that many days from uh, 9-11. So, you know, 7093, just going to do it again. And that gives you your birthday when you turn 52. So so it ties 9-11 with your birthday that we already have as a piece of the puzzle. We already had your birthday there as a symbol. It's also why I was born 40 years after the Lateran Treaty. So the Lateran Treaty was February 11th? 1929. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. That's interesting. I, ne I never thought about that, but I didn't know when the latter treaty was. Yeah. So, so we have that February 11th date. It's a symbol there. And, and then we have the years. So that goes from 9-11 to um, December 25th, uh, 2023. Right. So that's just whatever it is. It's 900 and some days longer. Anyway then the word end. So the end of years, though, becomes this symbol, right? And, and so we're saying that that symbol is 9-11, which Daniel 11-6, if you just flip it over, end to end becomes 9-11. And um, so this is when this league occurs. So they just shall join themselves together. For the king's daughter of the south, so we're saying that this is not the spiritual aspect of the new end. This isn't the globalist, but it's their daughter. So it's some kind of philosophy or religion. She'll come to the king of the north. So that's Protestant America and make an agreement. So this is clasping hands with spiritualism. That's what happens at 9-11. Prior to that, they, they reach across um, uh, the, the gulf to grasp hands with the Roman power. Now they're reaching across the abyss to grasp hands with spiritualism, right? And we, we have things like, um, you know, we get Roman law instead of common law, right? We have the, um, the Patriot Act and all kinds of freedoms occur. And it strengthens the power of the globalists with what happens at 9-11. Right. And when we should be able to see that, that doesn't we don't have to go into lots of examples to show that. Um, but she shall not retain the power of the arm. So this is the part here in verse six. She shall not retain the power of the arm. So this is this religious power. It's not going to retain the power of the arm. Um, military power. Neither shall he stand. Nor his arm. So the he must refer to the king of the south. But she shall be given up. And they that brought her. And uh, and those whom she begat. Right. So we're, we're taking the, the alternate reading there. Those whom she begat. Not those that begat her. And he that strengthened her in these times. So how did we just sort out all of these different uh, pronouns. So how did how did we sort this out? So we've gone through this before, but we should be able to. We've gone through it a few times. Because when we get to verse 7, out of the branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate. We're saying that this is Biden, right? So we have 3653, which is 10 years, if you take that as days. And, and we counted that from the 20th day of January in 2011 to the 20th day of January in 2021. We have the word um uh, let me see. We have the fortress of the king of the north. 
She'll deal against them and she'll prevail. So she, he shall and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north. So how do they enter into the fortress of the king of the north? This goes back to this agreement, right? They shall make an agreement. What's the agreement? A league. Yeah, so this, but this is a league, but we were saying that it has to do with rights. Correct, human rights. Yeah, human rights. So that this is about uh, the thing that infiltrates the fortress or the constitution of the king of the north is these human rights. They're basically counterfeit human rights, right? They undermine uh, the inalienable rights of the individual in the American constitution by introducing group rights. So we can see that this is all happening since 9-11. This is what's being described here in our history. And uh, Biden coming into, in, into power is entering into the fortress of the King of the North. Exactly. Right? And so this is the branch of her roots. So this is her, whoever her is, the, the king's daughter of the South, whatever that is. I mean, it is possible that this is referring to the papacy, though that's kind of odd having the papacy as part of the daughter of the South, even though the papacy is part of the kingdom of the North. But it could just be the aspect that we see in the papacy in that that type of liberalism, right, that we would see with uh, the present um, uh Pope, though in 2001, the Pope still would have been Pope John Paul II, which would be a conservative Pope. But over time, we're going to see that out of the branch of her root shall one stand up in his estate. Now, in this context, it's it's um, a brother of Laodice, right? Or of Berenice, pardon me. Correct? Is that what it is? Well, we've got the brother of Berenice, but in in a symbol in a symbolic yeah. manner. Aren't we also talking about, since this is coming from her roots, mm -hmm. is it also not possible if this could be another iteration of paganism? Okay. Um, okay. So Sharesh in, is where this word comes from. So 8328, um, this Hebrew word, Sharesh, is from, uh, let me see here. I get the right spot. Um, so it's root. Um, So like a root of a, I'm just seeing what the Sharash, Sharash. Um, and so it's a root, literal, root of people involving firmness or permanence, a root bottom as low as stratum figuratively. And then 3827 um, could be, uh, to root, that is to strike into the soil. So that's just the verb. Um, so that where it just comes from that verb. And um, it could also be heal as well. Sharesh could be heal. Okay. So out of the branch of her roots, so we got branch, that's going to be nester. The sense of greenness, striking. So this is a shoot uh, coming from her roots. Okay. John stand in his estate. So we're going to say that that's Biden, right? That's based on the numbers that we have here. So Biden is going to be this 
and, and not necessarily Biden as a person, but what Biden represents within the presidency, the globalist president. If you, when you're looking at, at what you were just addressing. Yeah. As you were saying from this roots, Suresh. Yeah. Eight, three, two, eight. Yeah. If you look at the first mention, the first use of this word within scripture. Yeah. So the first use is going to be in Deuteronomy 29.18. Right. But if you take a look at the description that's given from that verse. Yeah. Whose heart turneth away from the Lord our God to go to serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Okay, so in this, there is a warning that Moses is giving. Yeah. Because lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord your God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Mm -hmm. It shows us that this, this situation of the branch of her roots is not serving God. It's serving something else altogether. And since there are only two classes, if you're not serving God, you have to be serving the adversary. And the way that you're serving the adversary is either paganism or papalism. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now one of the things that we have Stephen here, I'm glad he's here because we talked about this. So we have that um, here they shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north. And then in verse, um, which verse was it? Where it says, even unto the fortress. I should probably set this up. Um, but it was verse 10. It's not. No, verse 7. Yeah, so shall enter into the fortress. And there's another verse that she shall come even unto his fortress. Um, now, Stephen, do you have thoughts about these the fortress here? Now, we're applying this in our context to the Constitution. But I know you had some things to say about this in the past. Yeah, the Tower to you and Kimberly, they applied it to the defeat of Rome, I think it was, or hold on, um, yeah, in 1798. So you okay. have here, you have here the, the, the king of the south, Bernanese's brother, making an easy victory against the king of the north. It's just basically there was very little opposition. And that was very much sort of what occurred with 1798. So that was their application. Okay, so so here we have, they enter into the fortress in verse 7, but they're stirred up even to his fortress in verse 10. So what was the distinction there? Because you're saying the first could be applied to 1798? And Daniel eleven ten to nineteen eighty nine. Um so so part of the thing is about verse ten. So we know that the word overflow refers to the Sunday law. Right. Yes. So yes. So verse verse ten was applying to nineteen eighty nine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and so nineteen eighty nine brings us into this history of the Sunday Law. Though technically, um, you know, the Soviet Union is going to fall, but but the King of the South does not really fall, right? 
that is that just passes to something else. So when it overflows and passes through, we go to Isaiah chapter 8, where it talks about the king of Assyria coming even just up to the neck, right? So the idea that Jeff had is, well, that's going to refer to 1989 and uh, that the Soviet Union falls, but but Moscow still exists, the capital. So Moscow oh, is still the king of the yes. south. But, but we're arguing that, no, that actually passes to the UN. So we are right in the sense that when the Soviet Union falls, that's not the end of the king of the south, but it now passes to something else. And that's to the UN. The UN becomes this globalist power. Right. So, so part of the problem that we're having, I shouldn't say it's a problem, the thing that we have to solve is we, we started at verse three with the Greek kingdom. And, and we have moved through this, but it, it's going to repeat. So when we get to 11, nine, we're back to either nine, 11 or we're at November 9th, uh, 2019, which are kind of parallel to each other. But then we would then say, well, 1110 is dealing with the Sunday law. And 1111, well, we apply that as the Battle of Raphia, right? So this is going to be this history from November 9th to the Battle of Raphia, if that's January 6th, 2021. Right. And then so that would just then follow on from that history, 11, 12, when he has taken. So it's sort of a repeat in the large of, of what we've already done, because it's repeating the history of the king of the north and the king of the south. But now it's repeating it in our specific history, dealing with. You know, November 9th, 2019, January 18th, 2020, all of that history. So when we start to get to the Battle of Paneum, this is going to be the response to what happened. Um, you know, so the response of what happened on January 6, 2021, this is going to be the Republican response or the King of the North response to the King of the South. And we see that the King of the South is defeated. Right. So it's going to take us all through when he had taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up. He shall cast down many ten thousands, but shall not be strengthened by it. So that's after the battle of Raphia. For the king of the north shall return and set forth a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come after certain years, and a great army, with a great army, and with much riches. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. So we know historically that's going to be Rome, right? Mm -hmm. um, we place that historically. The question that I've been asking, is it possible that the robbers of thy people for this history could be the apostate Protestants? Now, uh, well, I was always looking at it as the papacy coming into play. In the right. Sunday. So, I mean, they, the, because the, the, it has to be Rome, because Rome establishes the vision. So, so Rome must come in to establish the vision. All right. Um, so they, they're going to conquer the king of the south. And then it says, but he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will. And none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land by which his hand shall be consumed. So originally this is, is pagan Rome, right? But we see that it parallels what happens at the end of the world with papal Rome. So, so the, the problem that we have is where do we start repeating again? I mean, we do have some repeat and enlarge within these verses. Because it's going, it's, it's giving us this broader brushstroke and then it's narrowing it down to our history is how I see it. To what has happened with within the United States. 
but there's still a lot of symbols that we have to sort out. And so far we've been using these, these Hebrew definitions of strongs. Um, we haven't been creating things with them. We just, we, once we sort of place our dates on a line, we see that these fit in with those dates. So I, I don't know. You know, I don't know exactly how we're going to resolve all of this, how we're going to sort out everything, but but we can see that the first part makes sense, what, what we've done so far. And so when we get to this overflow and pass through in our history, um We're looking at this repeat of history. When the king of the south shall come into his kingdom, shall return into his own land. But the sons, but his sons shall be stirred up, in verse 10, and shall assemble a multitude of great forces, and, and shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then he shall return and be stirred up, even to, even to his fortress. So the his, of course, um, is the fortress of the king of the north, not the fortress of the king of the south, right? So the king of the south is going to come against the king of the north. He's going to overflow, right? So maybe that's not the best way to look at it. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom, but his son shall be stirred up and shall assemble a great multitude. So... Um, so though his sons could be the king of the north, right? I'm getting this mixed up. So his son shall be stirred up. That's the king of the north, right? Coming against the king of the south. That's how I said it the first time. You got it mixed up. Um, and shall assemble a great multitude of great force. So this is Republican, the Republican Party. Just you know, some way of looking at the right, whatever you want to call it in response to what the King of the South has done. And when this happens, uh, can we see that the King of the South, the Democrats shall be moved with collar and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the King of the North? Uh, can we see that anger that's in the United States, or am I being too literal here? Okay, so is that is that helping at all? I mean, we still have a lot to sort out. Um, I do want to go back to one other thing. Um, So we have um, we have some key words here. Um, so if we go back to verse six, so one of the things that it talked about, uh, and he that strengthened her in these times. Now that number six two five six. What did we do with the Hebrew number six two five six? I mean, besides seeing it's a 360. Um, yeah, so we had that it was, if you multiplied six times two times five times six, it's 360, right? So it gives us that symbol. And, and the fact that it's the word times. Um, and now this is the word times in the sense of it's the Hebrew word at which is um, like a season, right? It's, and it's related to the word, oh, 
as well, but the word et, boat, which is a sign. Um, but this refers to time now, when, a season, it has lots of different meanings of time. So the fact that it represents that if you take that number and you get 360, that would add to the significance of this Hebrew number, right? Now, there was something else about it, and I just don't remember. I could probably look it up. Um, well, we were having the conversation about this verse and the following verse. Yeah. One of the other things that, that struck me and that we have been addressing so far um in verse 11.8, we have another word that's being translated as princes that is not Sar in 11.8. Okay. Okay, so what, what was that? I don't remember. In 11.8, you have... Hebrew 5257. Okay, 5257, yeah. Okay, now this, this is entirely different. Message. Right, it's poured out, means poured out. Right. So it, it is not the same as 8269. That we were looking at in Daniel eleven five, like Sar, right? Or Sarin princes, yeah. So, um, so they shall carry captives into Egypt, their gods with their libations, and with their precious vessels of silver and gold. Right. So, I don't think I don't think princes is actually the best translation there, because these are the Precious vessels of silver and gold, um, which which would could be used for libations. And so this is about religious worship. So when they enter into the fortress of the king of the north, which is the constitution, and deal against them and prevail, they're going to have this take captive the religious world, so to speak, of the king of the north which we see happening with the churches. Are the churches becoming woke? Yes. Yeah, which really surprised me at, at the number of churches that just people who have been opposed to even, you know, women pastors all of a sudden becoming woke. It was actually quite surprising. But I mean, every everything that we would look at that's in relation to Hebrew 5257 gives us just another piece of the puzzle as to so much that we're seeing happen around us right now. From the very initial time that this word is used through what we see in Joshua, in Psalms, and Ezekiel, it adds to what we're looking at here in Daniel 11.8. Mm -hmm. so when we're looking at this we have out of the branch of her roots out of the branch of paganism shall one stand up in his estate shall one stand up against the constitution yeah. Okay. And we're certainly seeing this happening right now that many of these points are being addressed. Because as Solomon had noted, there is nothing new under the sun. So everything that's happening here has happened at some point in the past. 
Mm -hmm. So, in looking at this, that the her as a religious worship, a religious entity, the presentation is that this is paganism that is opening the door for papalism to be able to take control. Would you have a problem with that? Mm, okay, say it again. You got... As, as I'm looking at this, as I'm being led to consider this, yeah. her being paganism is opening the door. It's making the way open for papalism to be able to take control. Okay, that makes sense. So, so we're just saying that, that this religion is really paganism. Right. Because that's the king, the daughter of the king of the south. Right. Which, if the king of the south is atheism, but it's connected to paganism. Right. So this comes in, and that's through these so-called, you know, human rights. This Correct. Woke, right? And we see it is paganism, I mean, through and through. Um, but being embraced by Christianity. Right. All out of a sense of compassion or something like that. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, now, so uh, what was I doing? So just getting back to, I just wanted to finish with that 6256 number. Right. And um, this is 17 years and basically 47 days. Um, and so it brings us to December 25th, if you count from November 9th. So um, now if we went to December 25th, 2023, and we did minus six, two, that would be November 9th, 2006. So the thing that we don't know, like it gives us this span of time between the November 9th and the December 25th, right? So we know our 777 days is from November 9th to December 25th, right? So the fact that we have this number that is symbolically 360, right? 6256. Right. So 30 times uh, 12 is 360, right? 6 times 2 is 12. 5 times 6 is 30. Um, but it also gives you a span of time from November 9th to December 25th. So it just relates to our 777 structure as a symbol, even though it's 17 years and 47 days. We, we don't have that span anywhere to any December 25th, right? Um, so. so we have all of these witnesses to our lines in these spans of time, in these symbolic words, like the significance of the word itself times, but also that the number six times two times five times six is 360 plus if you take that span of time, it goes from November 9th to December 25th. So, so we have lots of witnesses like that. There's a lot to keep track of. I, I probably should write more of these out. Um, but that's something that we should note is that um, this word times uh, can do that. So, so anything else? Uh, because when we come back to this next week, I really would like to be able to put these more solidly, draw these lines out a bit better, a bit clearer, get all these Hebrew numbers sorted out. I'm probably going to have to go through the the studies because I can't remember all of them. But <clears throat> um, let 
So. Yeah, and see, you know, if we go from November 9th, I'm just trying, um, 2019, I mean, we can't go from 2019 uh, if we went from 2016. It'd bring us to December 25th, 2023. So, um, and if we went from November 9th, 1989, it's going to bring us to December 25th, 2006. So it doesn't really fit in with any of our minds. But um, we, we could just somehow connect it. I'm not sure how we would draw it in here. because, um, But it's part of our 777 structure. I'm just going to make a note down here. So... Uh, Hebrew six two five six equals seventeen years and forty seven days and goes from eleven nine to twelve twenty five. Okay. Oops. Just to remind us of that. No, I guess I get this to this bold. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we're ending this week. It's a lot of things that we study. A lot of information. Okay. So, any final comments before we close with prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. We need your presence every hour. We pray for the studies coming up uh, this weekend. We ask for your spirit to work upon our hearts. We ask for your angel's care and protection and that you can help us to be obedient. We know that many of us are facing trials and struggles in various ways. And we ask, Lord, that we can cling to you and that we can obey your voice. Bring us together again, according to thy word, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. <clears throat>